Yeah, the International Health Foundation. Um, I'm going to mention it. I, I don't know that we can. Well, if you have a paper and pencil, maybe you get a chance to jot this down. The area code is 901, and the number is 427 8100. Uh, and now that, that's the hotline that is between. Between 12 and 1 uh, Ontario time, or Toronto time. And, and 4, 4 and 5, 5 in the PM. afternoon. In other words, that is, that is to answer brief yeah. questions. But people that's who want Eastern to time, by the way, because yeah. we have two time zones in this enormous but, province, which is larger but, than. Most but positions of people who want to write to the International Health Foundation at Box 1000 in Jackson, Tennessee, and that's 38302. Yeah. But please, if you write, send a. Well, send a self-addressed envelope. Well, the, uh, Tennessee, they won't take Canadian stamps, but if you want to tuck a couple of stamps in the envelope, we'll swap them in the next time we come to Canada. Actually, I dare say what you'll find in Tennessee is a few stamp collectors who'll pay a lot more than 34 cents <laughs> for Canadian stamps. Um, may I ask where you're calling from, please, if you're still there? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, I have to alert our, our uh, panelists tonight to the danger of, uh, of getting lured into diagnosis on, on the air. Uh, right. We'll run afoul of all manner of uh, mm -hmm. beasties mm -hmm. if we do that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, um, the the issue of diet is an interesting one, though, because as you said, you said yourself, it's been updated in the book. Right. But is it a long-term business? Is this a diet that we have to go on for life, or until we regain some kind? Of acknowledging that yeast exists in everybody's body, and healthy people don't can go through their lives eating whatever it is they're eating now. And well, not, never, ever, ever have a yeast, yeast related problem. Okay, when your immune system gets strong by some of the things that Carolyn talked about, and it is not only taking antifungal medication and taking a good diet, but it's exercise and getting fresh air and clean water, changing your lifestyle and taking nutritional supplements, then it gets strong enough so that if you want to go out and eat a Twinkie, it may not trigger it. Or if you go over to your mother in law's house for Dunna and she has a favorite dessert, which might be pile and mold, and you'd be rude if you didn't eat it. You eat it and see what happens. But I had one patient, a mother with four children. She cooked brownies, and she was doing just fine, and she ate about four of them, and she said it took her two weeks to get back to normal because the sugar in them fed her yeast. So again, as you go along and you get stronger, you can be a lot less strict on the diet. Carolyn, is this condition... Uh cyclical or cyclical, could you go into a kind of spontaneous remission? Uh, and I'm referring, I guess, in my mind, if not in, in fact, to, to females particularly mm -hmm. who have a cycle, a, mm -hmm. a, a periodic monthly cycle. Yes. Uh, you know. I think it can. Um, premenstrual tension to some extent can be yeast related. In, in the PMS work that I do, I tell people to stay off sugar and salt before the period and and get some exercise and some very basic um, uh, B complex supplements and, and maybe some B6 and they come back and, and they feel a lot better and I don't know if that's to do with cutting, cutting back on feeding the yeast or just the other B6 treatment. The other thing is in terms of cyclical, I think when someone's under an extreme amount of stress then the, the yeast syndrome can um, rear its ugly head where um, I guess you'd say the immune system is suppressed by the stress, so it can't deal so much with the yeast. So if a effect. person has a yeast-related condition at any point in one's life, you're pretty well assured that that's not going to leave you. Well, I think you can get well. I think many, many people, if they follow the treatment program and adopt a healthy lifestyle and get rid of the junk food and don't take birth control pills, the cortisone, or a lot of antibiotics, why well, they can get well and live, quote, a normal life. What is it about the birth control pill that creates a problem? Here we go attacking women again, mm -hmm. Carolyn. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems to be almost a sentence to be born female. Oh, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> uh, the birth control pill, um, it had its heyday in, in the 60s. There were a lot higher doses of estrogens now. And it, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are estrogen receptors on the yeast and there's some interaction there. The lower dose pills may be a little less uh, um, yeast uh, encouraging, but that's good. The other thing though is when we're talking about, uh, about birth control in general, I think for, for the venereal diseases and, and for the other horrible diseases coming up. People are going to have to use condoms and foam. I, th I think birth control pill will have to be put on the shelf. But um, 
to answer your question, yes, the birth control pill encourages right. yeast. We'll hold that over a couple of weeks from now, two weeks from now, in fact, we're going to be talking about birth control. But mm -hmm. there is a relation, isn't there, between infertility and yeast-related yeah. situations? Well, I'm not a gynecologist, but I have several gynecological consultants. One of them from my hometown, Dr. John Curlin, says that anything that is related to hormone function can be affected by the yeast. And this research article by Dr. Whitkin from Cornell University, and this is one I'd like to send to physicians. June 1985, when he found the immune system problems, he said that these in turn were related to endocrine or hormone problems. So Dr. Truss also found that a woman's hormones are especially upset by the yeast toxin. And your hormones have to work right to conceive, and so infertility can be related. I have one rather dramatic patient who had been to Vanderbilt, the University of Tennessee, had had all the tests for six years, the husband had had all the tests, and again, she had headache, PMS, fatigue, depression, and on the special diet in Nystatin, she conceived in six weeks, delivered a nine-pound baby, and named it after me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look like you, did no, it? No, no. Yeah, good, it was a good. Boy. <laughs> let's, take right. another, let's take another call, <laughs> yes. Where are you calling from, please? You're on the air. I'm calling from Scarborough. Go ahead. I would like to know, I have a son who's six. When he was younger, up until he was three, he was on a... Just a minute, we have... Uh, hang on for a second, please. We've got a little problem with your, with your line uh, level here. We're dealing with it on this end. Okay, would you mind starting from the beginning? You have, you're calling from Scarborough, and you have a child. Right, he's six. Yes. Um, up until he was three, he was in and out of hospital a lot on antibiotics, all for different infections, basically yeast. Yeast in the ear, in the throat, everything. Um, now he seems to have settled down. He's eating a balanced diet. He's having a lot of vegetables and fruit and things like that. Should I still be cutting out the chocolate and the sweets? Be careful of diagnosis again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want a diagnostic answer. I just, if it could be yeast, if I feel it is yeast, would it help him if I cut out his chocolate bars and sweets and treats well, after meals? Well, I don't know whether the Bible uh, that said moderation in all things. Uh, I love a chocolate bar occasionally. And I think that it is the child who is or the adult who is consuming large amounts of chocolate milk or large amounts of Twinkies, a sugar-coated cereal that gets into trouble. So I think you can just see. But I, I wouldn't give a child, any child, my grandchild, your child, any child, chocolate every day. I think that he may become allergic to it and he may get too much sugar and too much fat and other things. I you agree. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we'll move along and take another call. Yes, where are you calling from, please? Yes. Calling from Ottawa. Ottawa, you're on the air from Ottawa. We're getting a little feedback on some of these calls. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Have you got your television set up loud there? Uh, just turned it off. Okay. okay, go ahead. Um, Tony, my wife has quite a few of the symptoms that were mentioned on the uh, previously on the air. Your wife has quite a few of the symptoms mentioned. Such as, you know, the headaches, the fatigue, and uh, PMS tension. Yes. Now she's just going through some of the tests by different doctors, neurologists, or gynecologists, and whatnot. Now, I'm just wondering, would it be automatically for one of those doctors to check for a yeast infection? Would doctors routinely check for yeast infection? She's got quite a few of the symptoms. She's been a gynecologist and so on. Is it, a root, is it part of the routine? No. <laughs> In, in this uh, province, uh, Carolyn? Well, if there's a vaginal discharge, then you'd routinely check, uh, the lab would routinely check for yeast, but I guess a doctor may not put it together that that could be causing symptoms throughout the whole body. she got PMS and, and so on. Mm -hmm. A doctor will, uh, we, don't, we hesitate to suggest, but mm -hmm. the doctor might look and say, oh, well, another female, what are we going to do? It is, it is very easy to do that when you have so many problems in front of you. They tend to look functional, but we're starting to put it together that they may not be. If this woman were to come to you and you hadn't discussed uh, yeast problems with her, how could she put it to you that maybe she's thinking yeast, you know? I how guess what, what she could do is bring Dr. Crook's book with her to the office and uh, say, it seems that I have these symptoms, you know, can you help me with it? That, that's how a, a patient might approach, approach a problem that they're putting together because doctors need all the help they can get. You know, we, we're, our time is very limited and that would be helpful.